Oh my God, that's close. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Was that too close? I was, was working on it all night and I thought that was about you could, that was about right. You could not get closer. I could hear your glasses rattling, rattling. against the screen. <laughs> what does it say about me that I look forward I, and I think about these bits? And it's nice. It makes me also, it makes me feel cared about in some weird and bizarre a whole fucking bu- way. In a bizarre way, because there's some kind of attention, even if it's why am I looking away now? Where am I looking at now? I don't know. Paul. Uh, oh, Paul. <laughs> oh, Paul. Um, I write, I come up with ideas for bits, but I don't always, uh, I don't always execute them. Yeah. Okay. So one of the bits I was going to do today was, which th- I know this one won't work. Uh, I came up with a series. <laughs> well, how could it fail after that intro? <laughs> I wrote a series of things I can say as comebacks to you. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, you Al one? Jaffe. <laughs> you want to hear one? Sure. Well, okay, then no, I, pretend... I want to hear a song. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? If you think, if you think that, if, uh, if you feel like a room, why can't that be the version? If you think it's a room without a view, clap along. And just slightly flat, clap along. It's falsetto, but I'm not quite there. Right. Clap along. And it sounds strainy. Very straight. Yeah, the there's an end to a falsetto range. Am too. I missing? Am I missing the free sound that he gets by going? It's kind of got a Adam Sandler thing to it, right? Uh, yeah, that's. I don't know how you shake that. I jammed this weekend. I went down and visited a friend, my friend Dan Zbanyevich. Try to spell that, and I'll give you a million dollars. If you spell it, I'll give you five dollars. Zbanyevich. Say it. Say it again. Dan. Zbanyevich. Zbanyevich? Yeah, Dan Zbanyevich. Zbany- but you say it fast, Zbanyevich. Uh, ZB. Yes. And that's it. That's all you need. Okay, five bucks. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, keep going. <laughs> Buy me a case. coffee. <laughs> uh, ZB O-N. Something like that. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. Right. Right, well, as, soon as, you said, the- as soon as you said something like that, I was done with this game. <laughs> <laughs> But I was playing music, and we were dr- well. Uh, everybody else was drunk, but me because I was the designated driver, and we were singing songs. Uh, Dan was playing a, a guitar, and uh, we were singing uh, weird songs that you would sing in a sing along. Lover, there will be another one. We're singing Neil Young's "Birds uh, Around the Fire," <laughs> <laughs> and it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, it was. They live in her. They live in Manhattan Beach. God, I miss that area. I mean, I know I would have been death. I kept thinking both show business moved down there, and I would get further into show business. Was my plan? Right. Yeah. You right. Just get, you just get a more expensive place in an inconvenient location. Right. It never worked out. Like, oh, David Kelly's here. They're all coming down now. Right. <laughs> so he. But it's so beautiful there, it's Manhattan Beach. It's just beautiful. Do you like it down there? Uh, I, yeah, I like it. I was, never, I was never drawn to it, but I uh, uh, just because I know myself, it's like I could say I'm going to live by the beach and it wouldn't fucking matter, you know. <laughs> was, but wouldn't you have seen? That's the thing that's interesting to me because I think it's because I went to summer camp all those years and really hated New York, hated Queens. Yeah, really wanted to live in like a. And so when I came out to L.A. and I drove, I, came, I drove out Interstate 80 and I came up through San Diego. I think I've told the story before. I thought all of L.A. was going to look like San Diego. Right. So when I got here, I was terribly depressed. Sure. And that's how I eventually made my way. You know where it I makes live? Sense. No, I mean, I, I absolutely think and we've talked about this, but it's like totally makes sense. You're going to live in L.A. What is one of the best things about California? The coast. Beach. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. We passed by my old house on the way down there, yes, my old apartment, and I felt a little bit better about, I think anyone would be depressed in this area. It's Sepulveda between Palms and Venice. It used to be an Oakwood Garden apartment. Yeah. And uh, now it's some other thing that's kind yeah, of that's like not, Oakwood. That's, that's, a, that's a dreary corridor. You know what? <laughs> I thought that it was my problem that everything was going to be 
strip malls and bad food, and I just have to get used to it. It's true that everything is more strip malls, but that's a particularly depressing stretch. Yeah. And I didn't even know that Oprah Garden apartments were for like actors and things like that. I just right. knew it was cheap. Yeah, no, the, <laughs> the sad, there's actually a sadness fee baked into the rent. I don't know, but... That's the place I stayed where uh, I got friendly with a guy who used to be a member of the, who he was, he was in the ABA. Uh, American Bowlers Association? American Basketball Association. Ah, oh, the ABA. Gotcha. And he was actually very good. Yeah. You know, Compared to me and everybody else at the sure. thing. Sure. I'm sure he was quite good compared to you. He was, yes, he was unbelievable. And then we smoked pot once. And then he, what I realized later was he came back into my apartment and stole my pot. Ah. Uh, and the, this was one of the most embarrassing things I've ever had. Oh, I can do this. Another embarrassing thing, right? Fantastic. I wish I had a okay. theme song. <laughs> I was getting friendly with this couple. They were very, very nice couple. Uh -huh. We would be hanging out. Here's what I say after the pot gets stolen from me. Oh, you've told for some me. Some reason, Sorry. did you? You were trying to. Yeah, get, I did. Yeah. I asked them, "Did you take my pot?" All right. No, I didn't even say it like that. I said, "Like, is there any way that you guys would have taken?" And that just destroyed the relationship. It destroyed the relationship, yeah. understandably. Sure. And meanwhile, the asshole is like, "Oh no, don't accuse." I'm thinking, "Oh, he's very good at basketball. All he right. wouldn't just go back into my apartment." All right. <laughs> Also, he's a probably six foot five or above black man. Let's be honest. No, he was white. Oh, okay. But still, he was a white still guy. Still tall. Still very tall. Uh, uh, <laughs> and also, if you want to say New Yorker. I'm sorry. I, apolo coming... I apologize to all white basketball players for buying into a stereotype. <laughs> yeah. And, but uh, let's say I'm coming out from, uh, from uh, New York. I'm a y young man. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm, I'm not as aware of. Of, of prejudice. I mean, I'm not as aware of built, what my built in prejudice is, right? All so right. let's say he had been a, a, a black guy. I probably would, you know, and he was like, uh, I would have had my ra radar up. But because he was a, a white, a white guy uh, sure. who was very he was famous above, white above guy. Above suspicion. <laughs> above suspicion. And he was, and so much above and suspicion. The suspicious go, line is about 6'2. <laughs> so much above suspicion that I didn't even put it together. I wonder if the guy who saw me put the weed into the drawer. Right. Had anything to do with it. Right. <laughs> well, that was probably the least um, robbery type thing they had at Oakwood Garden Apartments back then. That would be, wouldn't even make the top 10 list. Probably. Well, <laughs> no one calls the cops that someone stole my pot back in those days. <laughs> that would be such the a stupid The statistics phone. are really blurry on the whole thing. It would be a stupid phone call today, too. Yes. Even. Yes, police. Someone stole my, my stash. My late mother-in-law's friend, who used to be her like running buddy, and then they had a falling out. But back when they were still uh, thick as thieves, and she, <laughs> they were the Cuckoo Pigeon sisters, uh, both British. You know, my mother-in-law. Right. She, this woman was British, but they <laughs> they were, you know, especially as I went through their photos and stuff. He's like, okay, these people partied. These people partied in the seventies. They had their <laughs> British social club and they partied there. There was clearly swapping going on. There was clearly you know, even was, with Allison's mom. Yeah, I, yes, Allison's mom. I can't and, think Allison's of mom, mom and way. dad were completely not above this fray at all. No, <laughs> no, they were they were party people for sure. Wow. And uh, and and it wasn't like and and there was nothing hypocritical about it. You know, and Allison's how mom. How do you mean? I mean, Allison's mom was not judgmental of other party people or right, or, right, or acting like. Others should be should behave, so to speak. Right, you know? right. Um, so, uh, so on that level, I'm not trying to bust their chops. I'm just saying they had fun. <laughs> but I can't but like at a family dinner, her friend Beverly was talking about how uh, they were like she saw coke in someone's purse once in a stall and like took it and went, "Who's going to complain about someone stole their coke?" <laughs> <laughs> so great <laughs> it's such a might be the best rationalization and a mean thing to do at the same yeah, time yeah no she wasn't a good person i'll be honest she wasn't. it wasn't like she found it on the floor she stole it out of the she purse. stole it out of someone's purse and and through there i have many examples of her not being a good person but what would be the point of that was um, she funny though or she was, was she oh, yeah, no she was funny from afar yeah but if, she if wasn't she even was in aware. your personal life she would hurt you but she was never in my personal life so Kids, Aunt Betty's going to tell us some 
wise thing she's learned. Now, kids, if you do want to steal something from somebody. Steal drugs. No one Still complains. Drugs. <laughs> Who's going to call on them? Why do I? Is this my? I think I have the you same voice. You were doing sort of Julia these. Child, I think. It's like, Julia Child, if you want to be, if you think you're a room without a view, oh, put some French food into it. Because it's crappy. Crappy, crappy. That look. I want to tell you something. If people ever say that Josh is not a cruel. No, that, uh, no, a cruel, I, that was just my that look that, 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 that was just falsetto face. That's all it was. Oh, that's true. It didn't go further than that, right? Well, first of all, if you're going to get comfortable, because I was thinking about, like, I was watching the Bee Gees documentary. I happen to love the Bee Gees. Speaking Some people of don't. Falsetto. Right. Yeah. But they go, they talk about, you, you saw it, right? The, I did. Uh, I did. Yeah. About the part where. Um, Still mad they he, didn't even fucking broach the Sergeant Pepper movie. Still mad about that. No, they, they talked about it. No, they didn't. They talked. They, they did. They didn't. They said, oh, no, no. No, they did not talk about the Sergeant Pepper movie. Why do I insist? <laughs> Shouldn't I have some kind of a governor in my mind going, you, you're, you don't know. You uh, don't you know. Should, no, like, well, you should just go as, uh-oh, Josh is digging in. He must be pretty sure. He must know, <laughs> yes. right? No, no, they made some reference and it's not even this movie. No, it was to, an, it was to another Travolta Pepper. movie. That, it's what? It was to another Travolta movie that must be named, could, that they talked about as the dreaded movie or whatever. But oh. They talked about how Greece was such a hit, and they had signed up. This is RSO. Yes. So, yeah. But I loved all that music. And the fact that he sounded great singing high uh, does not bother me. I just loved everything about no, that No, what I fever. loved about that story was that he didn't know he had that voice. You know, that's right. That that's he, right. That yeah, he literally had to. He dis, he discovered that he had this high falsetto voice by going out and trying to sing a part that they were trying to get. You know, isn't that so cool? So, but they they must have had high harmonies before then, or not? They had so high much. harmonies, but not that fault. They weren't all singing in falsetto. You know, I didn't go to the. Tr- I to the- started a <laughs> joke. It was much lower register back then. Oh, I, oh, that's right. I started a joke. That seems higher than it is. We started the whole world laughing, but it's not that high. No. Oh, if uh, okay. So no, no, they're going. Ten years later, they would have gone. I started a joke. Yeah. That started the whole world laughing. Yeah. And I loved them all the way through. So it was really interesting for me to watch it because it was like I liked them back when I was a little kid and heard, you know, isn't there one where there's also one the more first, hour and the guy's the life is through? A, also the first instance of a, a drum loop in pop music. Apparently. A drum what? A drum loop. Oh, to go on. For uh, staying oh, to alive. Go, that's right. And they he came sampled, up with it. They, they yeah. sampled Jive Talking or some other track that they just took literally one measure of drums and looped it. Well, I've always been a big lover of disco, except I never liked disco as listening to it on the radio because you it's had dance, dance music. You had it's dance, dance music. Yes, I understand. And stop saying that to me. You Don't ever say that dance. to me again. No, you Ladies and gentlemen, it. he had to dance. 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 God, he's got to dance. God, he's got to dance. Had to dance. Had to dance. Had to dance. And he had to dance. And he had to dance. I don't know why. It's I, I like I'm it. I'm not sure why I committed so fully to it, though. Well, because I think once you're in, you can't get out. <laughs> Tell me um, about it. Episode 313. What? You've been wanting to get out of the show? Well, no, no, why didn't you no, sit no, bring I, it up earlier? Not... <laughs> when did you start reading subtext? <laughs> why does your voice go down? Is it sub? It was sub, I guess. I don't know. It was subconscious. But the thing about it is, like... Uh, I liked, I don't know if it was in that movie, but they were talking about how di- the disco sound kind of got popular in like gay, gr- gay clubs and stuff like that. Yeah. And that, of course, when it got popular, it became commercially horrible. But the first, but the first start of it was actually kind of exciting. Yeah. You know, before they became like, yeah, uh, what was this the classic disco duck or whatever the hell it was? <laughs> the, the great Rick Dees. Yes. Well, was he called himself Disco Duck? No, he called his song, his novelty song, Disco Duck. Oh, he wrote that. He it was his. That was he was the artist of record. I find it hard to believe that he was as popular as 
as Ron D. Santos. Man, imagine just the things that come to you if you're like a hot L.A. DJ in the disco era. Right. <laughs> just oh, imagine. Yeah, because he's a handsome dude, right? Just shower down upon you just for being there. I may have had sex in the bathroom on Coke. I can't tell you, fellas. Imagine. Oh, I didn't tell you this. I was like a walking by the park, the one by the the huge park by the public library. You know the park. Take me through the park. So I see this. You know how uh, I love the park. Sorry. What is that from? It's Arthur. Oh, uh, I love that movie. Sure, clearly. Uh, <laughs> so I look at this. Uh, I look at this uh, license plate, and it says TDK SA ninety. Right. Say it again. TDK. Uh huh. Like the SA ninety. Oh, jeez. The man from Uncle is calling him. So it says TDK SA ninety. SA ninety. Right. So. I'm, I take, I'm, I'm taking a picture of it, right? Because the three is funny. Because it's just obviously a personalized plate. Who even knows who the TDK SA90 is? So I thought it was kind of cool. What are you saying? What are you looking at? No, I'm just trying to, I'm puzzling at why, at, okay. at what you thought. It's a was license funny. plate. No, TDK SA90, yeah. Right. To me, that was something that's not even a reference for a long, long time, right? That someone would know a cassette tape and know the name of the cassette tape yeah. and make that personalized place and play the cassette tape. So I'm taking a picture of it. I thought it was cute. And then the person who owned the car came up and said, Oh, you know, and she, it was the wife of the person who owned the car. So first I was like, Don't worry, I'm not going to dispense your, uh, your, the, the, I swear to God, you can take my phone if you don't believe. And, but they were just talking about $20. <laughs> but they were just, <laughs> I've heard about you, she said. Uh, but it just was like um, she started to explain to me how her husband was a dis was a DJ in the eighties. Yeah, and so that's why he would. But that, that is something a DJ in the eighties would. You know, I was like, a DJ would have. Yeah, of course, yeah. I deal with SA nineties all the time. I Did you? Have, but did you have scorn for this license plate or no, affinity I loved it. I for it? it was okay. Cute. okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, oh, because you think I have scorn all the time? Maybe right. I think you're prone to scorn. How about that? No, no, no. I thought it was cute because <laughs> I, it was something from my life. Yeah. that wasn't like okay. a oh look at this asshole. I, that uh, that was that was kind of where I that, that was where my puzzlement was was where was the scorn coming from? But there was no wasn't scorn there. at all. No scorn. And the lady was we talked about TDK in the nineties. Yeah, and I tried to sell her on um, a Max L. Yeah. No. So, uh, but but she but it was nice, and and she was very nice. And but I was just you thought I was thinking about Rick D's, and I was thinking about how much money do you have would have to make? I mean, how popular would the field that you're in and no longer be popular? That essay, TDK essay 90s was a thing that you talk about back to the, I just can't explain why me. Yeah, there is a little score. It's not scorn. That's, yeah, there is scorn. It's You're a looking scorn. to score off this person's little piece of, uh, this little uh, Easter egg for the old strips. I'll, I'll tell you why. <laughs> the only scorn part is when I think of the, 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 the disc jockeys of the 80s. I think of the, I think of the disc jockeys of the 80s. So there's a little fun. It's a little fun, Josh, but it's not so heavy like you're portraying it. <laughs> No. No. Speaking of, of fun and not heavy as it's being portrayed, uh, it's been fun to see the uh, people trying to process if our Walt Nada is, uh, is the real Walt Nada. <laughs> Have you seen that? Cause he, no, no, he, I haven't seen that. He tagged us. He's a, he's a fake Walt Nada, you know. Uh, but he's been around for some time. He was, he, he was, yeah. he was, be, you know, he, he's, he, he Planted his fake Twitter tentpole very early in the Walt Nada saga. He saw that so, it was a cool name. And he right knew that it bat. was Waltine Nada. So, God bless him for that. That's right. Uh, but he had said, uh, you know, he had. It's not like his pinned tweet of if you know, I, thanks for all the support. If you really want to help me uh, support Thought Spiral with Andy Kindler. <laughs> Has anybody helped us? I think one person did, but, I, <laughs> but I, I'm like on the fence if it was a uh, real or not. Real or not? They gave us one yeah. coffee, and it's like if you if you help if you support Walt Nada, I support you, kind of thing. But it was also <laughs> I, like it was like Star Wars fan something, so it's like yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, it's been fun to see the people, pro you know, because I think you know I do think that um, the. Uh, Pointing to us has hurt the ruse because anyone who clicks on it and sees two Jews, two mics, two hours is going to go, well, right. clearly that's not the real Walt Nada once he sees two Jews. 
or any sense of humor that would be indicated on the page of Paul right. Lauder. But uh, there are some people who still need to barrel through and try to score off of him and say something mean to him. And you'll, if you go to Twitter, you'll see you're, tag, you're tagged on these as well. So am I. I got to so, see this. Yeah. I have to see it. Oh man! Maybe you're used uh, to just getting nasty screeds in your feed, so you don't. You're you just didn't just you didn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm. You know, everything's better with me now. I don't. I, I'm a good person. Speaking and I, of therapy, yeah. and this is this could be a third rail. We'll see. I'm going to be very gentle about it. Uh, I watched uh, Stutz last night. This is interesting because. All I'm thinking about is he's going to hurt. Stutz is that you don't me. like Stutz? No, and I'm, that's why I'm saying I, I, I watch. I watched it with an eye towards this is important to Andy, so I okay. don't. So don't you know? All right. Well, go ahead. Give it to me. Well, I mean, give it to me. No, and, and there's stuff. I'm on, not going to react uh, terribly. I'm just going to judge okay. you silently. That's fine. I, that I don't. That like that. I'm not used to. Yeah. Well, well the silent part I am, I guess. But. um you have to sit up a little bit. I can't talk to you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't time. realize I was going back like that. <laughs> the body language was, oh, my God, it's well, terrible. Well, sometimes I don't know. The, uh, oh, that is a little bit like, no, no, go ahead. Cross no, go arms. ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I can take it. Um, so, I, you know, it, 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 it triggered me on so many things that usually trigger me that I had to fight through them. And those things are... Uh, documentary about making the documentary uh, you know, i i have no you know something like i just don't think they were hiding that like it was a big trick i, I don't i'm not sure why people get up so uh, upset about that i don't think they were saying i think he was just stutz was going like stutz wasn't going to say i thought we would seen this before i didn't i don't understand i don't get quite the vehemence of why that mattered to anybody I didn't know that there was vehemence about it, but it's something that. But bothers a lot of people. Bothers a lot of people. It seemed like it was contrived to people. Well, I think. Well, no, I mean, I think it was ultimately, it was a, uh, it was a fix towards being contrived. I mean, I think ultimately, the the message that he came up with for the movie was you can't talk about. You can't make a movie about someone whose whose field is genuineness and authenticity and lay a, and ladle all this artifice on it. You can't do it. So you know, right? So I think. But what, what bothered you about that? I, I'm trying to I'm trying to not have a black and white opinion about this. Oh, I'm okay. trying Why to I'm trying to talk? I'm trying to be nuanced about my let opinion. Me let of, you talk. What, okay. Maybe, you're the, here's don't the be, you, okay. I don't. Like, maybe we shouldn't talk about it because no, because you were in pure defense mode about it, and I'm trying to have a conversation about something that I know you paid attention to, right, so we can actually have a conversation. You're actually it. slightly upset, and I think you're upset because I'm interrupting you. Uh, there's no other reason for you to be upset other than that. What I'm saying is. I want to hear what you liked about the movie, regardless of what uh, I thought you were saying that that was an artifice that was bad. So let me back out of it and let's hear it from you without me interrupting. OK, so that is gen that is often something that I react to is the documentary about making its own self, basically. Right. But it became clear in, in the body of it. You OK. I'm looking for a pen just in case something comes to me. Go ahead. <laughs> um, uh, Why did you find that so hilarious? No, it's because this feels like a hostage situation now. And I, <laughs> I don't think it's true. I think that you can sense that you have a memory, a sense memory of me getting upset before about when we talk about things, right? That sometimes we talk about things and, and if there's a juice to them, no, or it's I not get a sense memory. You said you, the, when I brought it up, you immediately said you felt defensive. Like, Five minutes ago, <laughs> so right, right. But I'm okay. Let's not talk about that. Go ahead. Right. We don't need to talk about it. We really don't. I want to whatever hear the case. It. I think he's an interesting guy with thoughts. I'd much rather have read his book than seen them presented in this uh, thing because I feel like it was, you know, the only way. You know, you can't you can't interview an, a psychiatrist other clients. So I mean, there there was only kind of one way to do this, uh, and once he dropped the artifice of it being a session. Uh, I think it got better. Uh, and I think that he did a good job of uh, of recognizing that transition needed to be made, you know. Um, 
you know, it, the, the things that I didn't like about it were simply that there was really like this, I want to impress daddy feeling about it to me. Uh, but what do you mean? I, like Jonah wanted to, you know, like he had taken this father figure on and wanted to impress him with this movie. Right. Um, and I felt like, you know, you, you're saying, oh, you're saying that that's one of the reasons why you made the movie or. Yes. OK, yes. a lot a lot of that. You just don't like the guy a lot. There's a lot of that. But, I, yeah. you know, um, just because I feel like he's one of those people for whom showbiz is unhealthy. <laughs> you know? um, hmm. I don't have a strong take on it because I don't know him, yeah. but you seem to know him. Like when you talk about it, you seem to not say it's settled law, but it's like it's known that he's an unpleasant. It's just weird to me that he's known that we know that he's an unpleasant person. But I guess it's from him yelling on the set and stuff like that. Well, 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 well I mean, I'm not I don't want to just go through a litany of gossip about the guy. Right. Just, don't don't uh, do that. Don't know, do that. I'm just saying that I've come to my own conclusion about him through through anecdotally. <laughs> right. And through what I've seen as a, just a consumer of media. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he's talented and funny a lot of the time. Uh, yeah. I think I'm trying to think of like, to me, it was like, um, this would be a hard movie to make. So there's a certain, I think, a pretentious quality sometimes to maybe Jonah Hill. I didn't take it as pretentious. I just took it as him trying to work out how he wanted to present Stutz and he, and the fact that he said, look, I'm not even in this outfit. I'm not even in that outfit. I think that's just more to us at home. And that Stutz kind of like, it wasn't like Stutz. I came to love Stutz through this. Uh, I, I don't know exactly. It's a very strange thing. I have a very strong connection about how many people I've had who have Parkinson's in my life and so I was fascinated just to kind of watch him moving around and I think I just love the movie I just think I love the movie so I can't even really defend it except I hadn't heard a lot of those ideas before and some of the actual ideas are great and I think it's way better than they would be in the book because I wouldn't read the book that's the thing is I I have the book in fact yeah uh, and I had can read now Susan and I we we refer to the book, but I, I would never have heard of him if I hadn't seen this movie. I would never have read his book. I right. wouldn't have known anything about him. And so I kind of get a little embarrassed because I feel like my embarrassment is separate from you, from my feelings about you, or we can get an argument. I have this fear of being fooled, and so. Because I attach so much to judgment, I can't, it's hard for me to even accept. All right, you have a different feeling about this. I can't argue about it if I'm unwilling to think that there's any, if I completely give up my, what tends to happen is I give up my argument in a way. I, that's think, how I, I think that's true. And I was really trying to come into this with like, I understand this guy's important to you. I don't want to denigrate that. Right, but I, okay. Besides the fact that I think that we almost got upset, I was, I am wondering. In the last few weeks, it seems to me that you get upset, and I think it's because I'm. I just can't stop interrupting, so I just think that that's annoying. That's how it looks on my point. There's been a little yeah. rash of that where I've actually tried to come prepared with things to talk about, and they get derailed and very quickly with a with a side road. Well. I think when we're having trouble, but I say it when it's happening. It's not like I'm harboring something secret from you, or you know. <laughs> I mean, I no, but my fear is that, in other words, like as I improve my mental health, uh, or sometimes I feel so great during these shows, but I'm not having a conversation. Like if we met at the coffee place. So I am a little bit on. Right. And I think that people like me who dominate conversations and because you don't do it. You talk like a normal person. Why? Well, so you. to me, it just it just hits me. As opposed to a midget. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
trying to line things up. <laughs> it's still the funniest thing in the world. I, I can't really comment about uh, little people because I'm a real person, so it'd be wrong. <laughs> I think real person is the wrong word to use to distinguish yourself from little people. I think it really is. I think it was a faux pas, <laughs> but you've realized it. Thank you. And by the way, I, I just use midget for a laugh. So I know. <laughs> I know. But there's, there's, another, there's another aspect to this. And the other aspect is that um, sometimes what bothers you, if it, there's certain things because you make documentaries that bother you. That do not yeah, bother no, me. and I'm not trying to convince you to dislike them along with me necessarily. Right. I'm trying right. to just say, I watched this thing and had a different take. This could be an interesting conversation was my thought. Uh, right. You know, I, but I didn't have like a negative take like I wanted to castigate you for liking it. I was saying right. I was I was up against a lot of th- including just, you know, guruism in general. You know, as soon as a guy says, I have the tools, I start to sort of get my hackles up, you know. It's very interesting because I don't think that he presents himself as. Hold on one second. Hi. Oh that my like, God. It's like, like watching it's a like miracle man. It's that, like you it? planned it or something. <laughs> I don't like it one bit. I don't like that one uh, bit. So I had one. to, so I had to, you know, so I, so I purposely had to sort of let my guard down about that, about the guru thing, you know. Well, that's the thing. I hate gu- I hate gurus too, but I don't I, gurus are like to me like Tony Robbins. We're like, you know, you just have to think positively all the time. He's well, giving you actual things that I do think absolutely work. And there's absolutely nothing he said that I went, that's bullshit. I, you right. know, at, at most at, at most my resistance was there's other analogies for that. You know, true, true. You know, but if this one works for you, great. If this one works for your yeah. patients, great. You know, right. Um, you know, I got a little bit bogged down with, with, uh, Jonah Hill, you know, I'm going to use a tool now. <laughs> you know, there was some well, of that, that's but... the thing too. Well, that's the thing too, is that you had to kind of, that was a difficult part for me too. Okay. Because what did All you right. see? What did you see? <laughs> right. I saw a, a woman and she yeah. was French and what did she say? But, you know, it's so weird to me because... Here's what I really like about the guy. I mean, I think I think all of his advice is highly practical. I think all of his analogies are can be, you know come off as useful to me. Some of them are just different versions of things I feel like I've come to on my own in a different description. Some of them are like, ah, oh, that's nice, you know. Um, but and I liked, uh, you know, I liked I liked as a as just as a filmmaker, I liked that he was happy to roll with it, you know. Um, and clearly for like two years was happy to roll with it or whatever. Uh, I like that he, uh, I really like, you know, his, his therapeutic, um, give people hope, giving people hope and just some actionable things as opposed to how do you feel about that? Cause it's always seemed to me and I've never been to therapy in any extended time, you know, so I can't speak to it as how it how it worked for me or didn't, you know? Right. But it does seem to me that some people are going to respond a hell of a lot better to someone who sees something, you know, there's the see it, say it method is a lot better than see it, ask about it, you know? Yes. Yes. Uh, for some people, you know, some people, they want to feel like they've had their own Eureka and it's more powerful if they did than if someone told it to them. I'm, I can be that way myself, you know, where, you know, if someone tells me something, I'm like, I know, I know, I know. And then later I go, hmm, well, you know, I guess I didn't know. but I'll just know. <laughs> Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. You know, so I can have that kind of egotistical resistance. Right. You know, but I think, but I, but I, it definitely feels like this isn't a guy who's trying to keep around patients forever. And this is a guy who's trying to, like, you know, improve people's lives in a, you know, in a, in a more hands-on way. And I think, you know, that can be dangerous in the wrong hands. I don't sense that his are the wrong hands. Yeah, it really does talk to about the personal uh, aspect of watching a movie because I became I loved every scene. Like, so I loved his mother. So what I'm filling into it, I thought was fascinating, his mother. And that scene with his mother, I thought was great. Now, 
you could maybe it's because I'm buying into the movie that's all entertaining to me. Well, but no, but that was, no, I thought that was fine, and I thought you know once they decided this isn't actual real therapy, we're just doing stuff for the right. camera, then it felt better than this is actual real therapy. You know what I mean? Like once, although did they say it was real therapy early? Well, yeah, I mean he was trying to present it as if it was a single session in a you know back and forth with them whether it was you know he was saying he was kind of using his session to do this basically right you know right that was a conceit and and i've started movies with a conceit that you find out very quickly is not going to fucking work and you bail and that's fine you know he did it out loud some people bury the cable about it you know but whatever I, I, you know i think he made the movie that you know one thing with docs is you can't decide before the movie what the movie's going to be well, that's what I think was interesting thing, thing to me too, because the way I look at it is like it, taking away his ego or anything. Let's say I wanted to make a movie about this thing, I would be struggling with. To me, it's like when he was running it, just talking. I took it like, no, he's not claiming this is a session. He's 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 trying to film what this would be like. So I never, from the beginning, ever even cared when they eventually reveal that it wasn't no, one session. I, I, no, I didn't care. In fact, I was relieved. You were relieved, but yeah. I didn't have a problem with the early part because it seemed to happen so fast. The movie seemed to happen so fast to me, yeah. like where he's into this other part. I just enjoyed all of his, you know, his push-ups against the bio. It's just like I think it gets into a thing where I loved him. Right. I love the topic. And having – I wonder if I bend over back. I don't think I'm bending over backwards, but having disliked Jonah Hill so much – and not wanting to like the movies so much that, and not even knowing the movies really, yeah. I can't think of one movie he's been in that I love. Right. Uh, I mean, I the, the, like movie super bad. That wasn't made. That, that was really made for, more for kids, right? In a way. Well, teenager kids, not teenager not, not kids. kid kids, but yeah. Right, and so. Uh, and that was when he was a kid. That was right. like one of his yeah. first things. So. And then the one where he's the baseball guy, or. Moneyball. I just never have a particularly one way or other reaction. No, it's uh, my opinion of him is not based on his performances. Right, it's, but it's, it's even not it was about, based it's on not, his point of it's, point of view. Like, did he do you people? Was that because that's a terrible point of view that movie? Yeah, he did you people. <laughs> right, but it's, so then you start to go. Does he think that's funny? But it doesn't or... matter. I mean, it, those are just jobs. Those are projects. You know that they don't define him as a person. Those are projects. You know. You know it's so funny because this is what's happening. I can't change the way I am, which is constantly describe, constantly exploring my personal feelings about things, and and and, and uh, as opposed to. Just taking it eat like to you're you're more healthy about this because you don't get that much into like you may hate Jonah Hill. And I shouldn't say that, but you're not. It's not a part of your life. I have found that the things I've hated have always been questioned by other people or maybe I was so strong in my hate of it. You know what I mean? That's always been an issue for me. Yeah. So it's like. I always like when the thing happened with. Your friend and our friend, Rogan, right? Seth Rogan. Uh -huh. To me, I was like, I make those jokes about all kinds of things. But then there was a person saying, hey, why are you making, why are you directing this at me? And then I was like, really had to, had to examine what I was doing and why I was doing it. Plus you were friends with him. So it's like, it's all of these things where it's like, I still am having trouble as a person understanding the nuances of life. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just understanding it means the more it happens, the more I'll get more insights into it and be less defensive about whatever it is I'm defensive about, which is having to have the right view or not wanting to be accused of making fun of Jay Leno too much. Or, you know, it's like, uh, like, uh, you seem to have a better resolution to the, the meanness of comedy as separated from what you really believe. You just. And I seem to be like, why is that guy talking about Leno? But you don't also do that in your act either. You don't really do much no. confronting of people. No, no. My my act is not uh, like uh, almost none of my act has to do with popular culture or right. or or culture outside my life, kind of. Yeah. Um. No, but the one thing I wanted to go back to, which was where was where it rubbed up against me personally, was Jonah Hill's weight issue. 
and that and dealing with that with his mother because you know while he had he had stuts there for this conversation i actually had this actual conversation with my mother when she was alive about how she dealt with my weight growing up you know so it was you know it was very it was really easy to sort of a b how we felt and and uh you know the thing that felt like this revelation of the movie was something that had never occurred to me but also doesn't ring true to me really was the thing of his mother being the only female in his life rejecting him essentially you know his uh you know how that's how he was hurt by it is that he felt like he was unattractive to women because the women the one woman in his life and to me right. and to me there was some, there was that element with my mom but to her it was what i felt from her was she felt that losing weight for me was going to make me popular you know it wasn't about it wasn't about women it was about popularity and she felt like popularity was the cure all for happiness you know was yeah. going to be you know and that's not what i wanted and she didn't quite get that you know i wasn't right. i wasn't seeking high school popularity and yeah. and uh and so her i felt like her i felt like her her whole th i didn't feel like i'm you know he felt like i'm a bad person he felt like i'm being rejected because of my right. weight whereas i felt um more defiant i think about it which is you're wrong that this is going to solve my problems <laughs> right. know? my but, problem but, but, is that i'm in high school period you know? <laughs> but didn't you yeah exactly you know? yeah yeah <laughs> it's not the uh, specific uh specific argument i'm in right now it's the but why do you think like when you okay here's what when you say you don't buy it I didn't Is say I didn't buy it. I oh, said okay, it. Did, I said it didn't resonate with me didn't personally. Didn't resonate. Yeah. See, I think I, it's I not that I didn't buy it. It's not like I'm saying he came up with the wrong, the right. wrong, you know, eureka about his own life. What the fuck do I know about his life? I'm saying that th I'm not rejecting it. I'm saying that this I is this, this is where it was. It, it it became personal for me. This is where I actually right. related to him. Yeah. Uh, well. And found that I had a different, different nonetheless, issue. I still had a different experience, even though our, our central issue was the same, it, it, it damaged us differently. But I just think it was like fascinating to be able to, he see a movie that, uh, he was saying to his mother, you suck the air out of all the rooms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just thought it was like, I can relate to him in the sense of. He's very self-absorbed. You didn't end up as self-absorbed from all these things. Well, I mean, I can't say that, but <laughs> I can't. I mean, but no, I don't think I did. I don't think I did. No. Do you think it seemed like he was severely depressed from how he looked? Were you severely depressed from how you looked? Not from how I looked. I became severely depressed for other reasons at times, but it wasn't. I didn't. I, yeah. I was never like, I'm fat, therefore worthless. I really just thought it was just kind of like my one you know my sort of lot in life right <laughs> right know? i just sort of was like yeah. you know work around yeah. work around the best you can fatty cuz you clearly don't like dieting <laughs> very much you know <laughs> <laughs> um i watched the rest of the re i watched the i don't even think i ever saw the wrecking crew is what i'm thinking i keep oh, yeah. that thing i i just asked kept asking you about it kept asking you about it <laughs> So there are a couple of things I wanted to go over there with you. Okay. It was like, um, okay, just check, check me. Uh, it was the guy who, ho who directed the movie is not a natural writer, right? Is, uh, Teddy Tedesco. It's, what's his name? Uh, what's the son's it, name? I don't know. It was Tedesco's son though. So he has this intro. I just thought it was funny because he has this intro where he's like talking about all these things about this time period. He goes, what follows is, and he says, what follows is the story of my yeah. family. And to me, it's like, that's just like that nobody would catch him and go, what follows is you're, you're direct, you're, t the movie's in, you're in the movie now. Right. Right. So all he had to say was, this is the story of, yes. you know, no, but I mean, the, the doc, he's is, just a regular guy. Yeah. The so doc itself is it. verges on amateurish and it's, all, it's a, it's a sort of innocent doc in its movie making. Right, it is. The story is, you know, the story is great and the people in it are great. But, Carol Kane and all but, those people, yeah. yeah. The, but the the production of it was very much this little personal thing. You could tell it was this personal thing, the thing, and then he sold it, you know, because it's great. Did you story. talk to him? No. 
oh, I thought you got a lot of information about getting clearances. Was it just from observing what he had to go through, or am I getting it completely wrong? I don't, I don't recall the link. I think I might have used it as an example of something. But... Like next time, next time you you'll know not to not real. Something about you not realizing what how horrible it was going to be trying to get rights. Well, that that certainly was the case, but I don't know how it relates to the move to the wrecking crew. Well, because he had trouble getting rights. Yeah. So I think you knew about that, and uh, here's what it is. That's not what it is. I realize now what happened. Uh, my apologies. I heard a podcast or or about about this movie. Ah. That's what it was. Where and he you was related being it to my story. Yeah, and he was talking about like, like one guy was really an asshole. That's not your story, right? One guy was really an asshole, uh, for no reason. But he didn't say who the person was. Yeah, is no, that your story? No, my story was more about giant corporations not caring about my tiny little license fee yeah. and not getting back to me and just stringing uh, it along and hoping I'd go away, basically. Um, till I had to hire me a bully. <laughs> uh so I have an alternative his his um his joke I have we know all these jokes but his joke to end the movie was uh what's the what what do you call a trombone player with a pager an optimist uh -huh. right so my version I heard was what's the difference between a frog hopping down the road and a trombone player walking down the road the frog was on his way to a gig the frog might be. <laughs> That's how I heard it. Ah. The frog might be on the way to the kid. <laughs> yeah, and that's so funny. And it's like, I realized, like, who would want to play trombone? It's got to be... I play trombone. Right, but I mean... <laughs> yeah, but, are there a lot but of, real people. <laughs> are there, like... Is trombone Doc? Is that what Doc plays? No, he plays a trumpet. I don't understand. <laughs> I, my, I, don't look at me like I'm Trumbone stupid because I am stupid. Trombone is slide thing, slidey thing. And what's and what, show me how a trombone's played. <laughs> oh, oh, so you're talking about the guy with the big cheeks, right? Who's the big cheeks guy? What? <laughs> Who's the big cheeks guy? Uh, that's Dizzy Gillespie on the trumpet. You can't. Well, he's you, sliding. You you, no, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> he's moving his fingers on on valves. You okay. stop. You can move your arm all you want. You're not Dizzy Gillespie. <laughs> so what's this one with the big one going this way? That's a trombone with the sliding thing. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> have you seen Andy? a band? <laughs> uh, it's you? just for my mother going and Z. Your cousin Michael is going to college. Should he play? You play violin. Would you recommend a wind instrument? See, that's where it's all from. Yeah. My eyes glazing over. <laughs> um, the other thing is, is that I thought it was interesting, this argument that they keep having, because I think and it's an interesting argument that has to do with ego and has to do with that everybody feels like until they're into the group that they're not accepted so every this whole thing to me is always funny that people who don't read music always feel, but they could be like paul mccartney right so they're right. geniuses right and they at some point feel ashamed a little even glenn campbell was like oh, glenn you're supposed to take the lead here he goes i don't know i can't read music yeah. goes, well it's just the melody of the song right but the idea but what i'm just saying is having learned music it's read music it does not make you a great musician. It doesn't make you anything, really, to be able to read music, except if you're like Tommy Tedesco, who could read this fucking charts, and he's playing something right. he hadn't seen before. Well, he's just a fucking genius, is what he is, at, at, at playing and things like that. And also, he played for a million and a million hours. But the point is, the fact that Paul McCartney doesn't read music, and that the one person does read music, is kind of irrelevant. And, 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 and I'm only saying it in terms of, like, People, no. oh, I always thought, oh, it's good I can read music, but I don't have a great ear. Right. You know, I, I but I think I had a normal ear, and uh, wanting to have a great ear was part of my whole thing. Like, well, if you don't have a great ear, you can't be a musician. Right. But it's like, it's just so funny to me because they would feel embarrassed. I think it's because of classical music making people feel like assholes. What is, uh, what is, uh, 
stuff's called that? Some voice X or something? Something. Yeah, part X. Part X. You that tells of, you you could never do it. You got a lot of part you X suck. in you. You got a you lot suck. of part X in you there, Kindler. There's no question. But so, to me, when it's like I loved watching Tommy Tedesco give these, um, like, performances that he would give, like, out of school. So I was at the Musicians Institute, but I was at uh, Dick Grove Music Workshop. So I could have seen one of these things. And to me, it was very entertaining, those things that he was showing. Yeah. Where he would show you how he played the same song for every everything that he asked for. Yeah. You know, I need something Puerto Rican. Do, 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 do. You know, just like. <laughs> so I just kind of, it was just interesting to me because in the long run, the ear is much more, the ability to pick up stuff for the ear is a way more, if you're just looking at like what's going to propel you forward faster, that propels you forward much faster well, when I mean, you can yeah. hear things. Musicality, I guess yeah. you could call that. Not just, westernality? Not westernality, but, oh, yeah. but you can yeah, grease the wheels a little with that. Right. Um, you know, I just think, you know, I think it, two people with equal talent, you're better off knowing how to read music than not. But if right. but, but if you're truly a musical person, you're going to find a way to get to what it is anyway. And, you know, that's true. And once you understand chords, then you kind of do read music. You just don't read that particular script, you know, it's also not applicable. It's not applicable to pop music to have uh, it written out like a classical song. It's just that's not the way the well, music and the is. Other th- and, the, you know, and the other thing is guitars, you know, knowing uh, knowing a piano and knowing a guitar neck are two different things, I've learned. They're, totally, they're just, totally they're different. Just, they're just like a completely different way of visualizing music, essentially, you know. Um, and I still, even when I'm playing guitar, I'm picturing a piano keyboard when I'm mm. thinking of what the notes are, if I'm actually thinking of actual notes. Right. But, but if you just are someone who sat down with a guitar you learn that, oh, this pattern applies all the way up the neck. This pattern applies all the way yes. up the neck. And you start to learn the relationships of the notes to each other in terms of a guitar. Yes, you don't learn it in terms of like memorizing scales. You right. learn how it fits on the guitar. And then you can't be thinking every time you're going high up the neck where you are because your mind needs to go faster than the uh, right. yeah. no, figuring just, out the music. At some point, you need, with a guitar in particular, an instinct. Yes. That connects to that neck. I never got it. I, I still don't. You know, I have, you know, if I'm playing a lot, I can start to play what I'm feeling, but it, take, it I'm, I'm, I've never put in the shed hours to become a good enough guitar player. And Are you talking about lead? Well, lead, I'll just never be. But even as a good, I mean, I like, I'm a shitty, just electric guitar player in general. Oh, I think I'm good. You're clearly better than me by a long shot. This is why do I? This is so amazing to me. I think it's you never get, you never lose that part of your mind. That's like I can do that too. Why can't he talking about doing it? I also can do it. <laughs> I, I mean, this is the big breakthrough for me with my voice. Was like, I can sing. I know how to sing. I'm getting better at it, but I'm not going to go to musician. Musicians don't want me to put me on their albums. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's like one of these things, like the reason why musicians are react negatively to comics sometimes is because I think they're afraid comics are going to come in and make them play with them or something like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just signed up. Speaking of mu- comics among musicians, I just, uh, Allison and I got asked to do this, uh, Nilsson. I've done it before. This Nilsson annual Nilsson night celebration where everybody plays Nilsson songs and it's all, you know, it's all LA musicians. And then wow, comic Josh shows up. Um, so I'm going to, a man used to do that. Uh, play Nilsson song. Yeah. One is the loneliest number. She used to do. Yeah. But this is an evening where everyone picks a Nilsson song. And is my friend Danny Capillion there or you didn't, he didn't, I don't you know. don't know that name. I don't know. I, I don't know. Damn it. Uh, but I'm going to do the, uh, this year I'm going to sing the closing credits to Skidoo, which Nelson sang. So. Well, tell them how's that go? No, it's, it's a whole, it's literally the What's credits. What's Skidoo? Skidoo is a movie we all watched about a while back. It's a hilarious, uh, 
Otto Preminger film with Jackie Gleason and Carol Channing and Frankie Avalon and I've never seen it and Groucho Marx. Yes, you have because we talked about it on the show and I lent it and to you. And is it really funny? And you watched it and yes, I watched Skidoo. Yes, yes, you did. We talked. Well, we, it? it was homework one week. Oh, God. it was one of our early homeworks. I, I have this memory now of, of Jackie Gleason doing something. Yeah. Why am I writing it down? I'm not going to watch it again. <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, I, you know what was great about that thing, too? Just seeing when you go, like, you know, you hear the beginning of Wichita Lyman, you hear her talk about it. It's just something you'll never forget, that she said, hey, what do you think of this, Glenn? And you go, oh, that sounds good. And it to me, like, the music in that early 60s, like, before... Before, like, I feel like when I was trying to make it in music... Being great technically was so important and was, and, and so there's a certain like it got into a competition music. Whereas when you listen back to these things like Wichita Lyman or whatever, there's less, there's less of a definition of what's rock and what's another kind of music. And you have all these musicians who play in all these sessions. It's just like it really was like a golden age, uh, you know of music where rock people and everybody was, it wasn't fully defined yet. So that's what I think what made it so exciting. Yeah. And you also just, you, you, the thing about that movie, that's also such, so much fun really is seeing how, you know, these things that become part of your DNA, these little guitar lines or something, were just a shrug in the moment, you know, they were just like, Oh, that works. All right. You know, Got me excited about playing bass again. Oh yeah, yeah. And I was like, "This is a typical thing that I would do my whole life." Well, I can't play bass because I hate, I hate using my fingers like that. Yeah. And fucking half these people don't use their fingers. No, no. It's... And Phil Lesh, my favorite bass player, doesn't use his fingers. No, most most players, most ones I like even use picks, but I still am a finger player. Yeah, and I think now that I realize, no, no, I or don't slap, have to. Or they slap or use their thumb, you know. But yeah. But I think now I can use a pick and get the same kind of, not the same boop Stanley Clark or whatever, but I think that I just, it's so funny to me, like, uh, I just never thought about a bass. No, the hard, I mean, I think the hard thing with bass and pick is that you get too much attack a lot of the time. Yes. You get too, you get too guitar sounding. Yeah. But when I was looking at her do her thing, I was like, oh, it seems like there's a easy box oh, Carol of K notes can, to play. Carol Kay can do anything, though. What's that? Carol Kay can do anything, though. No, no, but it made me want to get a bass. I don't have my bass anymore. My my, my ex girlfriend had the Fender Precision bass. Yeah. And I Fender Jazz bass. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I think uh, once again, when I get the studio up and running, overall, I prefer the jazz to the P bass. But I've played the a jazz. Lot of, I've played a lot of both. Oh well, then you would. Yeah, I, I loved her hers. That was What's the other... difference? Is more sound, different sounds, or different, different sounds and slightly different neck. Do you own one of those? I do, but I own a, uh, I own a, uh, an Aerodyne, which is, which is a jazz based body, but it has the combined pickups of the two. Oh, that was another thing I liked where she was talking about how Carol Kay was saying that Glenn tried her Dano electric or something. And that's how he played the lead to Wichita Lineman. Yeah. God, it's so cute. It's so adorable. I love it. I'm going to be some kind of expert on on Allison's 60s. album. We uh, used uh, we used a picked bass as a to sound as if it was a baritone guitar. Oh, bow, bow, Was that you playing? No, it was me uh, telling Pink what to play. <laughs> oh, I see. Bow, wow, wow, wow. What's the name of the album that you produced? Uh, it's called A Thousand Ways to Fall. And in fact, I'll play that track right now. i 
living in the darkness that's your right but I Under pressure, <laughs> I really am not good under pressure. I thought I had all, all my ducks in the in the road. Your punctuality, though, should be complimented. Regardless. It really should. Is and that, I was waiting. Not, I was waiting for you to not be begging for it to compliment you on it because you got a nice little streak of punctuality going. I know, I know. It's almost what I want on my gravestone. Almost. I mean, it's almost. It may not be the most important thing. He died on but, time. No, he was on time. He eventually. After many years of therapy, is this too long for the gravestone? No, no. I mean, after many years of therapy, it's too long and, to read from far away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to have a big. Th aren't you going to be in those things where you walk into a thing and then you're on a shelf? A mausoleum. And then your mother's over here. I don't know. Is your mother on a shelf? <laughs> no, my mother's at, at uh, back east. Yeah. I was going to get Maudlin there. She's she's buried with Sammy Maudlin. Really? Celebrity cemetery. I'm I'm back today. <laughs> I'm back and listening. Wow. I'm the podcaster's friend. Wow. Fantastic. But when I listen, I can only listen. I can't listen uh, and uh, for absorbing the information. You can, Just the you, can, you can be active, passive, but not interactive. <laughs> but not interactive. Right. <laughs> and then you laughed into that. But uh -huh. I still have no idea what you were saying. <laughs> oh, man. 
<laughs> no, I'm kind of trying to make myself like a Rain Man figure. Yeah, you're good. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Look, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's autism. I'm an actual person. I don't have autism. <laughs> I have friends who do, but I'm a real person. You're building an real... act. You're building an act around this. <laughs> yeah, a very unpopular, unpopular act. I had a couple of things to tell you, but then I did it really matter. Well, the, Susan was was that? No, I was about to say it depends what they were if it matters. Oh uh, well, Susan was doing a thing. I can't remember what the song was, but uh, but and she was going. I went, bah, 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 bah. yeah, and she went, yeah. So she was going along with the comedy bit of it. Yeah. So much so that I had to shut it down. I shut it down. Wow. <laughs> See, this is like, that's like when I, that's when, I, that's like when you can't sing along with me. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's just like, don't. It, don't. Don't, yeah. <laughs> but it was so good because I was like, I was like, I could see it. I'm creating almost like a Gracie. It could be a Gracie monster here. No, I would. I been. mean, I would fucking hope at this point that she at least plays along with some of them instead of just pushing back. <laughs> oh, no. When we're alone, it's very delightful here. I do a bunch of bits all day long. Sure. That she does. And then how is it delightful? They're funny. Oh, They're okay, funny between okay. us. I got you. <laughs> They're funny between us to go. I mean, we even do a bit where, where we even do a bit. Where I go, where I'll say, what the fuck were you thinking with that? You know, it goes along towards that. Yeah. But that, you can't go too far into you that. You can't, you area. can't, you cannot. Because <laughs> sometimes I'll do, I'll play the, will you stop it? You know, that sort of oh, big, yes, yes. that big sort of and almost. It just, and, it, and she takes it a little too literally instead. Wait, of, what is that originally from? Well, it's sort of a skipper thing to Gilligan. Will you stop it? You know, it's sort of, you know, it's just sort of a oh. general, it's a Laurel and Hardy saying, it's anywhere where yes. someone will get swatted with a hat, you know. Yeah, get on with it. Yes. It's also Norton. Yes, sure. I want to ask you a question. It's the impatient. What? It's the impatient partner. <laughs> you might have even you might have even felt it a time or two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too small to have gotten into that. I want to ask you a question. Generally, with everything that's going on with Trump's uh, resignation, what do you think of this year these days? Or whatever he's doing, huh. uh, I'm, I'm setting you up for a joke. Uh, how would you describe? What's going on with this GOP today? I mean, if you had a way to describe it. Well, you know, I guess it's the frustrating, best, I guess, right? It's no, frustrating. Well, it's, uh, to put a finer point on it, is yeah. that it's it's intellectually dishonest. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really a reveal, though, right? Da, da, da. <laughs> hey, the Republicans are lying. <laughs> All right. Here's All the right. thing. I have other things to tell you, too. And so don't claim that I'm uh, garrulous. All right. Oh, here's the, something that I thought. Did you also think I was leaning be... towards loquacious today more than garrulous? So. I, I got another one, too, that wasn't that bad. I mean, that was also voluble. I think I've right. heard voluble. And I've heard another one would be. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you who. Who is interested in this kind of show? You love true crime, uh -huh. right? Sure. All of a sudden, interactive. It's scary days on the on the moor, and every they they mail you a rock. One week they mail you a rock, then they mail you dirt. It's in sense around what's happening. What is? Well, this? you have to figure it out. You, you get describing. To it's a you figure out the mystery. Is this a you TV show? An app? What is? No, this? no, it's a podcast. Ah, okay. Podcast. Okay. And then they have to put the with other podcast with merch. You subscribe? No, no. The other podcast people have to promote it because that's what they're promoting. This is a great deal. I love this one on Audible, or I love this one. It's a uh, murder mystery comes to Schmeckeltown, and it's they send you they send you a rock, and then they send you a magnifying glass, and you are part of the mystery. Wow. That's Who not, would like that? Who likes that? Uh, I don't know. It's like uh, it's like uh, Tony and Tina's wedding in your head. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's doing a Zoom of Tony and Tina's wedding. The Zoom. <laughs> I don't know, but like, do you ever listen to Criminal? No. Oh, you know what it is? It's a podcast. Yeah, with uh, Phoebe, and she has the greatest voice. She does a thing where she'll read. She'll read, she reads like novels sometimes. Yeah. She has the greatest voice. I can see niche people wanting to do something like that. I just can't see millions of people getting involved in the interactive true crime thing that's more interesting than actual true crime. 
if you could solve a real case, that wouldn't be bad, right? Today we're going to solve a real case this year. I suppose if you're crowdsourcing a real case, it might there might be some, <laughs> yeah. Hey, we found the real killer. Don't t- anybody tell him because the reveal is going to be on the two-parter. All right. If you see this man, ignore him. Well, it's season, coming up. it's season three, people. We're at the end of season three, and I just can't help the overwhelming feeling being you people are fucking idiots. You just, <laughs> what, why, what, what don't you understand about cold case, people? Dear Sleuth Central, I'm a little, un, little, I'm starting to think that maybe this game, there's some holes in the logic of the, it's not exactly Agatha Christie now, I'm deciding. <laughs> You read Agatha Christie because you want to be, or wherever you read, you want to be in the position of the person reading the book who's finding it out. You don't want to be in an escape room the rest of your life. No. No, you do not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, here's what happened. I went, <laughs> and at the end, I laughed more to see if you still like me. Ah, and I do. I do. You were, oh, you were getting more annoyed than me. That, oh, boy, were you get you were getting hot Monday with my. No, it was, get, you know, it, I wasn't hot. I was. No, it, I was interrupting too much. It, it was. Uh, so you just did it again, fucker. No, uh, I, know, um, I did. No, I. Uh, no, it was. I because I knew, I knew I was. Ta- I was walk. I was taking Mister Gray into the land of black and white with bringing up this doc in the first place. <laughs> Miss, wait, I'm. Am I Mister Gray? Gray? I'm Mister Gray. Oh, you're, you're Mister Black and White. white. Yeah, that's right. It was good. It was good. I enjoyed it. It was good. I enjoyed it. It was good. And Josh didn't enjoy it because he doesn't like this because I say this. I say he doesn't enjoy it because of this. Don't let him change my opinion. Don't let him change my opinion. Don't let him change my opinion. I'm not bad. I'm not stupid because I like stuff. I'm not a stupid moron. I'm not like a stupid moron I was because trying I'm not so young. I was trying so hard to not make it that because I, 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 you know, I knew the playing. You did a good job I that. knew the playing field. I wasn't trying to make you. I wasn't trying to you, talk you out of it. I was trying to discuss it. Yes, and you know this because if I, I had to make a call to my therapist in the middle. I don't want to say it was a difficult session, but I put you on hold and did a bu- bu- bang, bang, boom. I think that I'm. Let's I did just a great say job you're of, the Greg Tolan of black and white thinking. <laughs> Greg Tolan is he the Larry Sanders of Citizen of, Kane? Citizen Kane. Well, who's the Tolan? For, oh, who's the Tolan that's on the Larry Sanders? As I see, Peter, that's a typical that's Peter, thing. That's Peter Tolan. Yeah, you were. And he was also in right. the monkeys. That's the thing. It's amazing. Uh huh. Wow. He wasn't. You t- why did you take like my good joke and turn it into three shitty jokes? Because I don't like anybody <laughs> to be a- as funny as me ever. Wow. I'm like Jay Leno in the sketch. Nice. <laughs> I'm Jay Leno in a sketch. <laughs> or Larry David on Curb. Right? Uh, Isn't that yeah. the same thing? Sure. Don't be too funny in the improv with Larry. Right. Make right. him feel like he's a great actor, even though he's not. You can be louder, but not funnier. Do you think Larry knows that when he falls, he does his face when he falls? That that's not a realistic face. That's like a like a slapstick. Oh, oh, oh. I, I, I do think he knows. He, no, he thinks he's a genius. He thinks he's well, no, uh, I think Buster both. Keaton. I think both. I think he thinks it's slapstick yes. and he thinks he's a genius at doing it. And yet, he also probably has the self-deprecating guy too. What am I? I'm not an actor. I'm not. I'm, I don't think so. I don't think oh, he okay. has that much of a self-deprecating. He's too guy. wealthy <laughs> to have that, right? Yes. I'd like to buy and sell you. Oh, that's funny, Larry. No, seriously, I put in an offer. I think that his thing is more certainty than it is uh, self-deprecation. Well, Seinfeld has that too. Oh God, bit. he's got a lot. Yeah, of certainty. yeah. Oh boy, is he certain? In fact, when I at, when he dabbled. What did he go to some? I know he's not a Scientologist, but when he dabbled with it or he went to one meeting or whatever the thing was, I could actually see him as a Scientologist. I could see him as if it wasn't such a horrible organization and it just allowed him to be. This just people. isn't regimented enough for me. <laughs> well, it's Kramer. There's not well, a, there's not enough judgment baked in. I don't know. You were telling me that you think Scientology is going to turn this around. You were telling me yesterday when we were walking by the celebrity center. I just said, read the book. I just kept saying, read the book. <laughs> but is his name Danny Masterson? Yes. The rapist. 
what is wrong with it's like you almost think like is no, I mean, this that's his name now danny masters of the <laughs> rapist is this in the actual scientology book the how to uh how to manipulate people sexually and uh threaten them it's not in the original dianetics right? i don't know it might be i've never read the book <laughs> i just tell people to well you know i did read a little bit right? i usually say i read the book and then get back to me and tell me what it's about <laughs> But I did it when I did the uh, uh, Root of All Evil. You read I studied Dianetics, it a little bit. yeah. I know. I tried to read as much of it as you can. You cannot read No, I mean, that's it. good if you're going to rail against something on television. It's unreadable. And, in fact, most of it now is based on you got to get the new book because that's wrong. That translation is wrong. Right. <laughs> this, it, you need the King James Dianetics. <laughs> and yet... Miss Cabbage is still doing those great commercials. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm Miss Cabbage. I run a religion that looks like a cruise line. <laughs> it does look like a cruise line. <laughs> when you're done, you'll say it's a Miss Cabbage of justice. You'll emerge tremfiant. <laughs> I feel like if I, if I, we don't go to the letters, I'm going to start to deteriorate. All right, but well, I will fuck, stay. That is the most clear <laughs> and present danger warning you've ever given me, and I like it. What do you want to know? We love your questions so much. It's half our show. Half our show. Pickle. Christ on a stick. Christ on, I didn't mean that, Christ on a stick. That sounds bad. Ugh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Christians. I'm a Christian sometimes. IA Arby's today, Pickle says, like I do every six months, and it always sucks. You might say it always sucked, but it didn't. It was once pretty good. How do I stop doing this to myself? Well, maybe, Pickles, you should listen to our show more, because we've talked about the, de the deterioration of Arby's. We were talking about it, not every show, but many, many shows, which makes me think that Pickles is just mailing it in. Just mailing it in. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I, uh... I mean, we can all agree Arby's was once good, but I think we can all agree it was also 40 years ago now. Okay, here's next. Laser hair removal no, I by talk, laser I want, talk, says, I want to talk more about Arby's. Did you, did, you, did you get my joke, though? No, I didn't. Laser, way, laser away by removal says... Oh, you have an ad. We don't have the same <laughs> ads. Oh, but I never saw an ad before. I have there. the Atigo suite of solutions. Do you know what's really terrible? It used to be that uh, whenever I would get someone in a, a thread of what I was talking about, where I'd be saying, Dave Chappelle sucks, it was always, you fucking, you know, don't, you don't, may not want to look at this, it says. You're not going to look at this, right? <laughs> and then, you, then I go, go, you fucking suck, you stupid goddamn hack. You haven't been funny since, uh, what are you, what are you uh, a, a substitute on Boz Burgers? I don't even get those anymore. All I get is, want to hit this? Oh, yeah. 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 How's this for you? Right. Maybe this would. Um, I mean, they don't even go to maybe this would solve your political problems. They don't even personalize it. <laughs> no, it's intellectually dishonest. <laughs> I mean, if I wasn't emerging Trent Fine from this whole thing, I wouldn't be uh, optimistic about it. <sighs> Dan, Dan Marsh. Okay, go. Oh, there go. Uh, you, you go. No, you, you go. No. All right. Okay. Dan Marsh says, hey, guys, it seems like comedians who are explicitly religious in their uh, acts exist in a separate world from mainstream comedy. How much have you crossed paths with comics who primarily perform for religious audiences? I, I really have not crossed paths with them much at all. Well, brother, you know, you're bringing up a part of my life that's separate from Josh. But sometimes when I go out on the stage... I don't want to talk about this guy's bad, this person's bad. I want to talk about, has anybody ever noticed when you're trying to go for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, how you can never find the Holy Ghost? What is he, invisible? And it's just beautiful, and it's maybe not funny, but people it brings people together. Yeah. I don't really do that joke about the Holy Ghost. You don't. No, that would be too insulting, right? Uh, well, it would be, it'd be, it'd be. It's one of those. It's got to be funny to cross the line. And... <laughs> uh, I could do my. Well, I wouldn't be Jew. I wouldn't be. I could do my. If I was very Jewish, I could do my Jewish jokes. Are they crazy? Look, 
I don't want to say we had anything. We didn't have, you know, we didn't have anything to do specifically with Jesus being rounded up. But it's not like we really, you know what I'm saying? We weren't broken up about it. It's not something that hurt our feelings. Am I making this clear enough or just bad? Well, both. Bad. Both. It's, both okay. it's, 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 it clearly, it's clearly bad, yes. Ben Earhart Art says, I'm happy to hear about your brother's new job, Andy. That's awesome. Just curious. Is there anything about your bro that we'd be surprised to know? Like, does he have any piercings or tattoos? A full back piece of a full back piece of a dragon or a secret second family, maybe? And then what's the thread say? It says, seriously, though, what kind of music does your brother listen to? I can't imagine someone like him listening to anything besides Perry Como, but like, is he maybe really into <laughs> black metal or Polynesian speed gospel or anything like that? How would he, what are the eyes that he would, he would know that my brother loves Polynesian? No, my brother likes where he loved Randy Newman. Um, my brother played classical flute. It's when he money was that matters. <laughs> Boom. You hear what I US... say? Sorry, I'm sorry for joining. <laughs> I got carried away. I didn't stop. I actually stopped because I thought you had something else to say. Uh, After Randy Newman. What else does he listen to? Uh, oh, no, I was going to say what other things about him. He was a great track a runner when he was uh, uh, the fastest uh, uh, person in school. And then even like uh, he, 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 he it was a real I was putting all my hopes in him as an athlete because my those dreams got crushed. And he's very, very funny. He listens to BTO, Big Takeover. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. That's enough. I mean, what money? What was is this? The uh, Robert Kindler? Let's talk about him he for listens, four hours. He listens to CS Net Worth. Sorry. <laughs> he 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 subscribes to C, his politics. C Y I C Y A. All right. All right. Ben Aaron Hart is back with his trifecta here, saying, Josh, can you just do a little bit of Jose Feliciano doing a commercial for Hostess singing about ho-hos? <laughs> I'd like to hear it. ho ho Why are you so cream-filled? I can't enjoy a day without your taste. ho ho <laughs> It cannot get better. Oh, yes, they will for ho holes in my face. The ho ho and the ho ho and the ho oh, That hurt. Uh, Mozart. Mozart. I think says, Mozart. Let's go with Mozart. Give him the. Give him the. I think it is Mozart. I think I'm, I really have a problem. Uh, Testro 312, pro possibly Testro 313. Oh, all right. Well, Covering I would take, yeah, you can't lose. I would take 1965 to 1974. No question. Uh, he's question. referring to uh, 10 years of music that he would do. Right. Okay. How you doing? Seriously. How you guys doing? Love to you and all spiralers everywhere. How is life on the road, Josh, if this gets on air post-tour? Andy, how is life in your duplex? I have a duplex. I like that. No, Andy has a complex. Oh, that <laughs> hurt my feelings. It really, really did. Because I have sensitive feelings about my singing. Oh. Ouch. How come I'm getting all these uh, ads now? We didn't uh, used to get ads. Because it's the new Elon Musk Twitter where everything <laughs> is bad all the time. Jason Parton, Joe Frank and Reynolds <laughs> says, uh, and by the way, Joe Frank is a reference to the fact that we couldn't come up with Joe Frank's name last week. You said it was Joe Frank. Yeah. I didn't come up to it right now. Uh, I thought so I, just I, I came up with it as I was editing. Going, fuck, it's Joe Frank. <laughs> yeah, I loved him. Paul McCartney said that this is Jason Parton saying Paul McCartney said that with the help of AI, he has made the final Beatles album. I say no way. What say you? He didn't make a Beatles album. They just made a track. They did a. a oh, OK. And they used AI to separate John's voice from another from it. It's actually perfect for Paul McCartney because this way he doesn't have to deal with another person. 
Wow. You can't just have to wow. deal with Finally, you get to unload your baggage. <laughs> it's so hard to muster anger towards Paul McCartney since I love him so much. Yeah. From a th- young kid. You know, I'll, I'll have to wait. To, I, I kind of liked, uh, I liked the ones they did in the 90s, kind of. You know, I didn't think of them as Beatles songs, but I still enjoyed them enough. The Free as a Bird and the uh, Real Love. Oh, and kinda, I remember it, though. Uh, when they did Beatles Anthology, they put out two tracks where... Oh, okay. This doesn't have George's uh, input on it like those, so I don't know what... Uh, what, what to make I don't know there. what George's uh, part of this will be, so but I'm reserving judgment because it doesn't matter. It's not it really sa- doesn't matter. It's not sacrilegious, and it's not going to hurt any of the other previous Beatles recordings. So. I was listening. I was uh, listening to "World Without Love," uh, which is a great Peter Nasher, and someone had a, a British Invasion collection that someone had put together. Yeah. Oh my God! You know what? There's a great group. It was Peter and Peter, right? Not Peter and Asher. Peter and Gordon, I meant to say. Peter and Gordon, right. Yeah. It certainly wasn't Peter and Asher. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, uh, the uh, the Jerry and the Pacemakers. That guy had a beautiful voice. Oh, fairy, cross the mercy. Da, 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 yep. da, da. And also, don't let the sun catch you crying. Don't let don't the sun. Go ahead, you do Sound? this one. No, I don't want to do it. Um, <laughs> because you've t- you've hurt my feelings. Ultimately, I say that I'm okay with it, but you've crushed me, Josh. Well. I shall never sing. You know what I'm going to sing? Here's how you catch me. I'm for I'm 66. I'm still afraid of a probing colonoscopy. But the people from Colo Guard said, Andy, would you do the thing where you do it in a box? Hey, and then you send that box to the lab. Who? And you get some, somewhat of an idea. You get somewhat of a, hi, I'm a cola guy. You get somewhat of an idea. Don't think that you're clear, though, if you get a good test, because it might not be completely accurate. (laughs) Still, it beats three days of shitting. Wasn't that the first Coachella? (laughs) That wasn't a bad, if you like shit humor, which I don't, but that wasn't a, you know, I think you're loosening me up with the shit humor. Loosening him up. (laughs) I am. I I clearly am. (laughs) Just take Tom Tom the Tom Tom because I'm laughing so much I can't even continue. Tom Tom the Tom Tom says, Josh, in the last show you were thinking of Jardians that causes the perennial infection. I like to yell out, taint rash, every time I see the commercial. <laughs> Makes my wife laugh every time, so I'll stick with it until she divorces me. Was Al Jardine in the, was that his name, Al Jardine? Al Jardine, yes, in uh, the Beach Boys. Why do I have to bring him down? I don't know. What did he do? It's a little pill with a big story to tell. <laughs> It'll give you bacterial infection on your taint and you'll die, but hey, you might lose a few pounds. Hey! All I know is if you have a terrible thing with Jardians, you're going to be in the hospital. You won't be able to get bop, 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 bop. You're going to die with the bing, bang. You won't get it out of your head, right, with the crazy singing. I've done that joke 70 million times in different formats. Okay, serious up here because Tom Tom the Tom Tom is back to say on a more serious note. uh, As the father of trans children, I'm happy that you are both progressive on the issue, even though old man Andy has to try a couple of times to gender someone correctly sometimes. What is she, he, t- what are they, they, why can't they, he, Tom, t- t- Tomasco, come on, Tomata, come on, Tomata, you say Tomata, I say Tomutu. Well, thank you, Tom, Tom, the Tom, Tom, and yes, I think my fumbling in general is always a little disturbing. But it's, it, well, but it go? it's well-intentioned fumbling, generally. Yes, it is. Generally, well, yes, unless you're talking about little people. I'm a real person. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I like uh, the way but, I lose the but right. But actually, that, it makes time. me very happy that, that a father of trans kids feels that we're progressive on the issue. So we're that trying all, to be. We, we, I absolutely. And also, who better than the parents of trans children uh, to talk about what it's like to have a trans child? That's, Why don't you listen to them? Thank you. All right. Nice work. I'm getting off my soapbox. Shecky Flopsweat 
says, Shecky's back with his brand new separate Twitter account. My name change and temporary blue check mark on my original account was a Kevin Meany voice mistake. <laughs> Wait, mistake is not him. That's not Kevin Meany. Who is it? Mistake is Dana Gould. Ah. Aren't you proud of me? That is good, yeah. Why don't I get any, any kind of like, wow, you know a lot about the only <laughs> thing you know about. <laughs> You know a lot about the only field you're familiar with. Yeah. Really great, Andy. Great. What? Praise begging? Uh, Christopher Citro. Uh, Christopher Citro says, my walk into... Okay, I'm not going to do it with the voice. I walk into the room. My girlfriend's writing something. Looks up. She. What does the word calum- calumniate mean? And can you use it in a sentence? Me. I knew what calumniate meant until you asked me, and then it flew out of my head. This happened... Ever happened to you guys? No, because I never knew what calumny was. In fact, I think it's misspelled, which means I don't even, I definitely don't know what the word is. I absolutely will lose shit when Andy pins me down sometimes. You've all heard it. You've all heard it when he tries to pin me in the corner and I lose the knowledge. I do, I just believe that if you're going to use a past participle, use a goddamn past participle, you stupid, stupid, inferior person who doesn't know ex- these extraneous rules. That joke, Stephen Elton Yates that, says, that joke is past its participle date. <laughs> oh, oh, Josh, I'm not kidding. I'm dying. And that's just my act. Stephen Elton Yates says, I've never seen the POTUS in person, but I saw VP Gerald Ford in 1974 in Washington, D.C. Have you ever seen the POTUS in person? I have not. Uh, oddly enough, I have. And it was POTUS Gerald Ford. On, <laughs> on Mackinac Island when I was a young kid. He was playing golf and we were on and we happened to be on the island and so we stopped and watched him go by on a fairway. Oh you say nice going. Why did you pardon him? You stupid that I was, was like, I was like five years old or four or five years old. I remember he was wearing like a white and red checkered shirt. <laughs> and I remember the Secret Service guys around us in suits. Because everyone else think- was like in shorts and t-shirts and stuff, and he, they were a bunch of guys in black suits. And you don't remember everything from that age, right? I remember a lot of shit. I, I have, oh, that's I pretty good. Four and five, I definitely remember tons. Well, from. See, well that means you had a good childhood. But great. Uh, Thanks for bringing it up yeah. again. What? That's nice. That's not, I remember when my big my died. big problem with that trip was they I was not I was because you go to Mackinac Island they don't allow cars on the island so everyone has to rent bicycles. And where I'm, was this again? Mackinac Island, Michigan. Okay. Um, where Gerald Ford is from, Michigan. And it's beautiful up there, right? Is that it is quite northern beautiful. part or yeah. something? Yes. Um, and uh, you have to take a ferry there, and then you have to rent bikes. But I was too young. To, like I was not, I was able to ride a bike at that age, right? But they didn't have any that were my size, uh, so I had to ride on the back of a bike, and I was fucking pissed about it. Oh man, you really? I mean, I might start to go back and to have some hypnosis or something. I can, if I is it, tell me about the times when you were five years old and you were upset because you didn't get your own bike. So, but why wouldn't they let? You, oh, they didn't have one. That's why it was. Who were you riding with? Your dad. I think I was on the back of my mom's just because she was more used to riding that way. Oh, okay. Oh, and then she go that, ah, and you just go, "What's wrong, little Josh?" And I'm like this. I uh, thought I would. I was mad. I was really mad. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I laughing too laugh too much at the end there? <clears throat> Dan Marsh says, "If a close friend." If a close friend who'd, uh, excuse me, if a close friend who'd never visited L.A. was staying nearby for a few days, where would you take them? Let's assume they have dispensaries <laughs> where they're from. Well, you took my idea, Dan. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, um, it really kind of depends where they're from. I mean, that's one of the nice things about L.A. is you can you can uh, fulfill a lot of different uh, flavors of wish. If they like the beach, I'll take them there. If they like uh, like a Chinatown, I could take them there. If they like, uh, you know, just I told you, I deli told you food. Did. It could be as simple as deli food if they're from the Midwest. You know, right? But I, I like some of the stuff. Like for example, if you, I have still not been to the Getty Center. No, have you? I have. It's beautiful, right? It is beautiful. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that the, might the, be the thing. the space itself is more impressive than the art collection to me, just because they don't they for considering the vastness and uh, and spectacularness of the space, they don't show enough art for my taste. That makes sense. Oh, a farmer's market! I loved it when I went. I still love it when I go. I've never had it. Market. I've never spent any repeated time there. I've been there like three times in thirty years. It's a little too yeah. too much waiting. Not, not the too new much Grove, crowd, which too much fun. crowding and waiting in line. <clears throat> well, it's less crowding now, probably because of the Grove. The right. people go to the Grove more, but I like that. And uh, but I think if I lived near there, it would be a it would be a regular staple for me. Exactly. Yeah, I would be down there with uh, who's the guy Fred Stoller yeah. used to be there every day. Yes. Why don't you read this one? Because this is an epic, epic one. From Grow? Well, we forgot Walt, oh, no. we forgot Walt, Walt Nauta. Nauta. Walt Nauta just said, what a week. <laughs> yeah. How many, did he get a lot more uh, followers now? He didn't get that many. I, I was tracking this. He got, uh, he's got 108. He started the week with uh, 33. <laughs> when I noticed, at least. And now he's at 118. So I don't Beautiful. think pe- people are not buying into the... Uh, that he's him. That he's him. For the mo- Although plenty of people are still lashing out at him because they don't have that many other options, apparently. It is pretty hilarious that uh, he goes from the being the co thing to then, okay, I get my bags and let's go to the car. Right. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. I, I don't feel sorry for Walt Norther like I used to. <clears throat> mm. Don't say that. He's, okay. He's our fan. Oh no no no! <laughs> Parry accounts are always welcome here. Oh, okay. Grow says last week's Dave Matthews reference was regarding their tour bus emptying their latrines illegally. Ooh, off a bridge accidentally. Oh my God! Onto a sightseeing boat. The thing people don't know was that James Mason and Howard Cosell were on that boat and got covered with feces. I just find that just uh, tonight. We're today. In a couple of hours, we're going to be seeing Tito Fuentes against Roberto Dubby, son of Peru. But right now, I go to my, oh my correspondent, God, it, it, James it, Mason. Excuse me, Howard. It, it appears we've just been mired in jam band feces. Well, I thank you for let me just the, say, uh, Let me just say it has an unusual taste on its own. You wouldn't actually promote feces james if you were paid enough would, would you well i did it's called thunderbird wine <laughs> end scene end scene beep 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 clarity Reppa here with another uh brain teaser <laughs> uh says uh does the extra two days give your brain a little more wiggle room to rehearse those spontaneous responses to our clever inquisitions shouting wednesday or on tuesday is unnecessary or do you have an e-fence day for your apital case. I don't, I don't. You know, I'm, what I'm picking up, which is absolutely real and, uh, and uh, what's it called? Uh, vi- uh, uh, viscous? No, you can feel it. What's it called? Visceral. Is that people are enraged about the Wednesday thing. And a couple of people have said, if you do it one more time, I'm not answering, que- giving questions wow. anymore. Wow. Wow. I had no idea <laughs> there was that kind of backlash. Uh, but to answer your your frag your your seed of the question, it's not two extra days. We didn't get two extra. We didn't go. Let's get the questions Wednesday and record Friday. Oh oh oh, that's not a bad idea. It's we need Wednesday. To put more time. Yes, it's Wednesday. Yes, it's yeah. because of Josh's busy schedule. Are you going this week? I am. Yes, it's going to be bleak. I'm afraid. <laughs> but well, I'm, why do you say that? Because uh, I, the situation just doesn't. It's it it feels a little sketchy. So, uh, so, oh, oh, so I'm, I'm re- right? and I could have gotten out of it at this point. I truly am just going to have Rich's back because it could be a bad, bleak situation. Oh, well, we love Rich, so yes, I'll go with you. I mean, I could be surprised, but I rarely am. <laughs> where are you staying? Uh, at this, uh, the hotel where oh, okay. we're gonna, yeah. whoa, try the veal over there. Uh huh. What? B.D. West says, guys, I, too, am an avid walker who will readily, oh, Quay, this is nice, uh, who will readily hop off alpian heighted curbs. Is that the right word? Yeah. 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 At the Alps, if the situation dictates. Also, I routinely mimic receiving a phone call, loudly saying, yeah, pausing and then saying, I'm on my way, while passing needy humans. (laughs) I feel guilty. 
Thoughts? I understand the feeling guilty. I do understand that you can't always stop, and I can't, and I, I just understand it all. It's all nerve wracking. I have four words for you, BD. Pocket full of twenties. <laughs> I think that's three words. Nice. That's not. Brian J. Mather says, uh, "Yo, Eminem, yo, 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 three one three, test show three one three, Detroit, hashtag rap." <laughs> I like that. I like the effort that was put into this. Let everybody like- here in the three one three put your motherfucking hands up and follow me. Everybody in the three one three put your motherfucking hands up. Hup, hup. Aren't you supposed to change it on the second line? A third Jew says, further to the ring dang ho ho chat the other week, have you gents ever happened upon the tremendous snack cakes up here in Canada? I'm talking Loon Moon. Joe Louie. Ah, caramel. Passion flaky, etc. If not, I might have to send you some which could spike. Spike, are you telling that they have separate than British candies? Is that what you're telling me? They're not candies. They're cakes. They're your hostess Drake Cakes equivalents. I can think of that in the candy category. Oh, do you? Well, you're not wrong in (laughs) many ways. Uh, But uh, no, I have not had any of those. And yes, you should send us some to Andy Kindler at P.O. Box. Seven 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 seven. Passion flaky sounds like that thing. You've had those, right? The crumbling things. No, those are flake bars. Me. Those are flake bars. You're talking about. Right. That's what I'm talking. That's about. different than passion flaky. Right. I didn't know that. So you know what's nice? There's so many ads. The same ad is back. Thank you, Elon. <laughs> F. Jack Barker says CBS News reported that Trump emerged from the courthouse triumphant. <laughs> or defined. I don't know. My hearing is going. I hope it was Trump. <laughs> I know. Be good. Especially if they, you know what? It would be great if they hosted like a se- segment on the show, um, MSNBC. Looks like he's emerging Trump Viant. It would like be. That. It would be. Uh, Torben Rolfson says, uh, why did the boat passengers on Gilligan's Island take so much luggage for a three hour <laughs> tour? <laughs> is he know. right? I don't know. Why could the professor make a, a lie detector out of a bamboo and a thing, but he can't make a bu- 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 he can't make a boat to get off the island? Bink. Really, the better question is, why did they pack any luggage for a three hour tour? Well, now you're getting too technical. <clears throat> How how angry was the was how angry was the professor and Mary when they the only people not mentioned they go and what the are you rest. mad about the rest what's wrong with that <laughs> right Harry Minot says do bathroom doors lock from the inside so that spies can copy documents <laughs> without being disturbed is that what tends to happen is that where they do it in no the it, was Ke- it was Kevin well first of all they're they're referring to the bathroom of Trump estate. But, oh, with the chandelier? Uh, yes. But well, yesterday, McCarthy was like, how do you feel? Blah, 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 blah. Well, how do you feel about a garage door that, that gets opened up and down all the time? At least the bathroom door has a lock, he says. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> At least a bathroom door has a lock. You know, that, 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 uh, that, that, that uh, garage up every day. Secrets here. Oh, um, it's closing. <laughs> right. Uh, Seth Dick the Third says, "You know who I'm done with? People that boast about being cord cutters, then complain they can't watch some sporting event or show because Andy, can you guess? Because they chose to stop cable. It's not TV. Ow! It's those cord. It's those cord cutters that get that get me. It's not TV. Ow! <laughs> Excellent, Seth Dick. Excellent." Greg Kelly says, uh, could Andy favor us with a song? Perhaps Summer Breeze by Seals and Crofts. Summer Breeze. Boom, bing, bang, boy. I'll do it a little bit different so it's more like a parody. Uh, uh, no, uh, no, what? no. Let's get some sincerity. It's a sincere mm-hmm. song. You don't need to cheapen it. I like to hear some in the sunlight. I like to hear this in the afternoon. Ha, ha, ha. Makes me feel high. Talking to the softness and the happy. I'm so happy. I'm so ooh, Jasmine. Johnny Whoops says, uh, I want to see that Redeemer statue in Rio. If I get us a private plane, will you guys go with me and record the show on the plane? I don't need to participate in the recording. I just want to be there for it. Maybe I've seen Blame It on Rio too many times. <laughs> 
how can you say it too many times? There is no such thing as too many no. times. Well, but, but uh, I like the whole idea of Rio. What is I, the statue in Rio? I, I missed it. It's the Christ the Redeemer statue on the big, it's the big Christ on did, the mountain with the outstretched arms. Uh, my arms did it just cannot appear? Be, my arms can't be contained <laughs> by the screen to do this. Let me back up so I become Christ the Redeemer. Nobody wants to now? see you. How about now, Andy? Are you seeing the arms? Are you seeing the arms, Andy? How about now? Yes, I do. Now I do. is it ringing a bell? Nothing more charming than Jews <laughs> mocking the crucifixion. <laughs> right? The last temptation of Christ. Is that chocolate pudding? Hey, Peter, I can see your house from here. Is another way to go. Oh, good right? one, yes. But I didn't write that one. Oh, is that it? Uh, it's it for the Twitter. Oh, by the way, someone could call. We're, we're waiting for a package, and when the, the alarm will go off, it'll sound like a it'll sound like it's an emergency here. So no, please don't. And then you'll act like it's an emergency, even I though will, you'll know I'm, it's a package. <laughs> well, I'm going to try now, since I told you, uh -huh. to see if I do okay. All right, good. Keep your shit together, my friend. Just keep your shit together. All right. Use your tools. <laughs> you mean studs? Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm a charming man. I'm an annoying man, but a charming man, but annoying. All right, here we go. Here we go. Moldy how locks. Do get, how do you get to your page? Oh wait, I was with Josh. Go ahead. I'm, 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 I'll be in there in a second. All right. Moldy lock says, being that we're approaching the 10 year anniversary of our favorite KCET video bloggers passing, would either of you care to sing a rendition of Mar-a-Lago? Here I come in a southern accent. Can't believe it's been a decade since we lost the big guy. Who did we lose? I'm here at Mar-a-Lago, and oh. I'm talking to all the supporters of America's newest felon. You know what he's doing right now? Now, how long am I going to be in this purgatory? What, do you know how long I'm going to be here? Huel, Why this am I not in heaven? Huel, this isn't purgatory. It's your show. <laughs> yeah. It's like heaven. You mean having to do your show for for eternity? No, it's not heaven. Eastside 76, as the official Mexican of Thought Spiral, I had to come back because representation matters. And by that I mean I will continue to send in dumb questions, dad jokes, and be a general nuisance. I act like someone's annoying little brother who has to tag along. Much love to you both. Happy to have you, Esai. Happy to have you, my Mexican happy, friend. Happy to have you. 65 degrees downtown Los Angeles. We're happy to have the official Mexican we, thoughts. We've got nothing but north of the border love for you. Eastside 76. Munson3786 says, uh, Gentlemen, suppose Foster Brooks was truly driving while intoxicated and a cop pulled him over. Would the cop say, hey, you're Foster Brooks, and then laugh and let him go? Probably so, because yeah. everybody knows Foster Brooks. And everybody knows he doesn't really drink. Right. And everybody knows he has a pretentious English accent when he's talking regularly. Not English accent, faux English actor accent. Yes, yeah, just a pretentious accent, John. But why do you, where are you from? What part of the country are you from? It doesn't Foster? matter. I'm, the, I'm a citizen of the world. <laughs> but Except I come from guys. just outside of... Brr, brr, brr. Buffalo. I want to ask you a question. Did you Buffalo ever get is what I was trying to say, John. I have a bit of a speech impediment. After doing that bit for 60 years, you ever get, Tur, you ever get, Tur, you ever get Tur. exhausted from doing it? I was so really tired. <laughs> uh, little Anthony Morgan says, I wonder would either or both of you ha ever head down to Lash Factor at 13715 Ventura Boulevard, wearing ancient fancy Western duds like Jean Autry wore, with powder on your face to give you a deathly pallor, and slowly enter Lash Factor and ask, Is Nathan Turk around? in a ghostly voice. It would be a tremendous, <laughs> if fairly obscure, prank if you would. I do it. Is there any money in it? I don't think so. I think it's just the pure joy of a tremendous, but fairly obscure prank. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything. Don't worry. Sit back. Okay. Relax. Just, uh, Don't, uh, no, not literally. Don't do not it. Not that far, right? Okay, no. Uh, Dan Wade says, hi, guys. As a Brubeck fan, I must speak out. One of you, I think Josh, said that Take 5 was the only good song Dave ever wrote. I must point out it was actually written by a sax player, Paul Desmond. Uh, he's an artist well, of mine. That's not that good news. Let me, let me just first of all say it wasn't me. It was Andy. 
Uh, oh. I my I just said Stan gets uh, my joke was Stan gets me. <laughs> and uh and and Andy's defense, he was doing a Dave Brubeck bit in response to Stan Gets Me with Come on, take five, take five. Right, so right. so no I, there was no there's no Dave true Dave Brubeck uh, de- no, denigration no here. I love no. the man. Me my, too, but I'm not as familiar with him as you would be. My former roommate actually got to play with him once. Wow. How come you never talk about... Is it Pink? No, it was uh, Joel Richmond, the late Joel oh. Richmond. Uh, Amy Peanut says, I watched all of Baskets again recently, so I'm on a bit of a Louis Anderson trip. What are some of your funniest favorite memories of him? I know Josh knew him a lot better, though. P.S. I haven't watched a show twice in such a short space of time since I was a kid. It really is perfect telly. It's great. Also, She's meant, from England. Also meant to say the news about Cody warming up to Josh elated me so much I got goosebumps in a good way. Oh. Much like when the bass drops in Karen. It oh. is. It's a, it's, a love, it's a love affair, me and Cody. And now the other dogs feel a little bit, no, it's just no, wonderful. I'm, I'm spreading it around. I'm, 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 I'm being like a parent who gives my love to them all. But uh, oh. but uh, there's entirely, had, there's so many dogs in my house now. It's really crazy. But, is uh, that the limit, though? That is the limit, right? I think right? it's the legal limit and it's the psychological limit. Right, right. That's true. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> but uh, I absolutely dig the little guy. And he digs me, and we're all very happy. And do we not? We know how old Cody could be. Cody's like four and a half to five oh. in that range, so he'll be with cool. us for a while, God willing. Yes. When did you get so prejudiced? Not prejudiced. Religious. What the hell is happening to your brain? Cosmonaut Jerka says, <laughs> uh, "Hey guys, do you think anyone has accidentally gone to a Doug Benson show sober? His infamously cold, bong side manner has me convinced." that he is a sociopath, not to mention his terrible crime of not following Andy on Twitter, but then muting him straight away. Shocking behavior. Do you both think that it's possible that the difficult traveling and often lonesome life of the stand-up leads itself to sociopaths being successful in the job, i.e. Benson, Leno, Louis C.K., et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? <laughs> I love his his cold, was it his bong side? His bong ben- side manner. Yeah, because it's like... His cold bong side manner. You would think if you're going to listen to a show where a guy's smoking pot that there's going to be laughter and, and everyone's going to be happy. No, it's just no. it's just slurred standoffishness. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a fight in the way there, so I, I, the whole thing is just really. Bad. I don't want to revisit. <laughs> that was a bad day. <laughs> uh, Poor fucking limo driver had to listen to us bicker. Usually you have to just you have to sus- subscribe to be subjected to that shit. And no, I don't know. I don't. I think I think that the uh, the lonely, solitary life of a comic lends itself. Uh, I don't know if it's a sociopath uh, uh, attractor or. Well, in uh, his case, he has his own schedule, so he's not even doing the. He, in other words, like he's not even in the club's road regular road thing. He's he's traveling. He's a traveling Doug Benson parade. Right, and so God he, and God bless him for that. I have no issue with that. I think I have right. no issue. I, I think it's absolutely somebody. smart that he came up with his own fucking thing to do. But he just yeah. he just could be less of a dick about it. Is really the upshot here. Yeah, I don't, I th- someone should interview him once and see what the fuck is. What do you so? Uh, why would he be bitter? He should be nothing but happy. Maybe yeah. he's not bitter. Are you going to ask that? Are you going to go through every comic and ask that question? <laughs> Why would he be better? He should be happy. We don't have that kind of time. <laughs> exactly. On Earth. Uh, Delicious Mick, beneath us, crying emoji, no fart talk, no virginity talk, and you call this a podcast? Josh, if you clutch those pearls any tighter, you'll start absorbing them. Just messing with you, Mr. Boundaries. Seeing as you're the <laughs> Michael Winslow of voices, I thought I would offer up a challenge. The Corolla impression has notoriously been impossible amongst the masters of mimicry who uh, care to try. I'd love to hear your attempt. And for Andy, for equity's sake, I guess you can try too. Peace and love, gentle boys. I don't have to be included in everything. I'm, I'm cool. I don't have a Corolla. I don't have it. Ah, I haven't wow. li- I haven't listened enough to pick you know, up. He's uh, just so annoying. He sounds like a he's grating. You get he's really grating. you got to hear someone's voice a lot to get it. 
And, uh, yeah. I, and where is he it from? He, he's from LA and he sounds like he's like mid. I don't know where he's from. I don't know he's where he's from. Man. I bet he's not terrible. From, I bet person. he's not from LA. Right. Lumpock. Wampus Reynolds is our final contributor. And finally. Says, gentlemen, the experiment of not spiral is coming to an end since I'm doing summer things. One of the main things I've really grown to appreciate in this odd recap is your stamina. I'm impressed how you keep going on and still making me laugh every week. The other main thing is learning more about how great Dan Wade is, but you already know that. <laughs> we do, and we and we love you too, Wampus Reynolds. Uh, thank you for trying. It's You can't keep up with us. I know it's you hard. Can. Many I have know. tried. And how do we do it? We're so entertaining week after week, and we do a lot. We tape 20 shows a month sometimes. Sometimes. We, we bank them. Yeah, we bank them, and sometimes they're just for our own pleasure. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what, kind of pleasure, what kind of pleasure would that be? But nonetheless, Wampus and Dan, I, we, we appreciate the, uh, the flattering uh, effort you made to, uh, to do a wrap-up show. If you'd like to support us, please go to uh, buy. What is it? Learn it. Learn it for next week, will you? Buy a cup of cup. Buy buy some car. Hey, who likes who likes Java? Die. Die. May I? Oh, yes. Sorry, Christian. <laughs>